Hello everyone, in today's After Effects scripting tutorial, I'm going to show you all about event listeners. Now you might be wondering why is there a giant ear on the screen? Well that's because event listeners are basically things you listen for inside the program and they detect whether you're clicking on a certain button or a certain key on your keyboard. So they can be used to basically initiate actions from images, from other buttons, and they can do things like detect clicks, what keyboard button you're pressing, Etc. So we're going to be going over basically how to write them and how to use them today. So the reason we want to use event listeners is that we don't always use the built-in UI elements like buttons, text, and stuff like that. Sometimes we use images, and images have nothing like an on-click or an on-changing feature. So we need to use an event listener to detect a click. So what this script will do is basically allow us to click on a button and let us know that we've clicked on it. And later on, we're also going to be going over how to use events, um, the event object that you use when you click on something. And you can use this to get a bunch of data, such as the exact button, when it was pressed, etc. So that's what we're going to be going over today. Let's go ahead and get started by opening a new JavaScript file. And first, let's create this UI. The first thing I'm going to do is have a variable for this image itself. Since I'm not going to be importing it from an external file and I want it to be built in, I'm going to use a binary encoded version. So I'm just going to call it binary and set it equal to this long string of text, which if you don't know how to create this long string of text that will create an image, what you can do is check out my binary image encoder tutorial. So after that, we have our binary image. Now we need to basically set up the UI that we're putting that inside of. As you can see, we have a very simple UI. We just have a window that says event listeners and a single image on it. In fact, for this script, we don't really even need to make a bunch of groups. We can just make the, the window and then add the image. So I'm gonna create a new variable called window or main window. I'm gonna set this equal to a new window, which is gonna be the type palette. And then we're going to call it event listeners and it's going to have an undefined size. And usually what I like to do is put in like orientation. So it's top to bottom or left to right. But again, this script is going to be super simple and the purpose is just to go over event listeners mostly. So all we have to do now, instead of making a group to put our image in is just create our image. So what I'm going to do is type in var image, which we'll call it the image. We'll set this equal to our main window and we're going to add an image and the image is gonna have an undefined size and the data we're gonna use for the image, instead of a path to a JPEG or PNG file, which is usual, we're going to refer to our binary variable above, which refers to this uh, code that basically references a PNG file. So now all we need to do is grab our main window and center it and our main window and show it. And we should see basically the same UI here pop up. So yep, we have our event listeners text and our ear here. So a lot of people have the presumption that anytime you add an element or an image inside of extend script or a script that you can just click on it and it will work easily. But there are a lot of features inside of extend script that have some troubles working. So event listeners are how we get around it. But there's even further limitations with event listeners, uh, which have to do with double click events for icon buttons and other things. So what we want to go ahead and do now is create an event listener for our image. If you came into this video not knowing what an event listener is, your initial instinct might be to take your image and say on click equals function. And then you can put in some text in here like say hello, halo. And if I were to try this and click on it, nothing's going to happen. And that's because again, there's no way to use an on click function for an, uh, an image. For example, if I just say dot on click, it is going to bring up all the things that I can actually use on clicks with. It says a checkbox, an icon button, a radio button, and a regular button. Not an image, so so anytime you type in dot and on change or any of these things, you can see everything it's compatible with. And if it's not compatible with any of these, you're definitely going to want to use an event listener. So enough talk, let's grab our image and add event listener. Well, there's going to be two different ways we're going to be applying it today. The first one is just going to be a standard event listener, which goes into just a regular function and doesn't take in any variables. And the second way is going to take in the event itself, which is a variable. So there's three different things we need to put in anytime we have an event listener. The first one inside of uh, string text is going to be the event itself. I'm going to go over this in just a minute. The second one is the name of the function we want to run. 
So in this case, I'm just going to say logo click, and then uh, down here I can create a function called logo click. And that way, whenever we click on our image here, it's going to go into this function, and whatever code is inside of here, it's going to execute it. And then finally, we can just put false. The last one is optional, but if you put false, it's basically going to function normally. And if you put true, it's going to require very specific uh, events to happen for this to work. So now simply inside of our logo click function, we're going to do the same thing as before and just say hello and see if we can get the program to talk to us. So I'll go ahead and run this and now I'll click on my ear and it's telling us hello, which means we've successfully added this listener, added our click, and we're going into this function. Now, as I mentioned, there are many ways and different things we can detect. So what we want to do to see what we can detect inside of ExtendScript is go to help and we'll go to the JavaScript tools guide CC. And then if we go down to page 83, you can see we have all of our UI event types. I'll put a link in the description as well. But you can use any of these and also reference other code on here. If you simply just type event listener, you can find the event listener call and it's going to tell you all of these again. You can say change, move, resize, all of these different things. So I'm going to go ahead and now comment out this first code. And now let's take a look at a different example where we actually take the click itself uh, and translate that object that is a click and read all of the information inside of it and see what we can parse out of it. So again, we're going to create another event listener. I'm going to say image.addEventListener. And again, we want to say, what's our event that we're listening for? We want to listen for a click. But this time, instead of typing in the name of a function we want to go into, we're going to type in a snippet of code that sort of creates its own function within this event listener. So I'm just going to say function, and then we can type in an argument if we want, which we can say e. We'll just say e for event. And then everything inside of here is going to be what runs for our function. But then again, we also need to close our event listener, so I'll add another end bracket below. So it might be weird to see just a variable e. It's not been defined anywhere. It's not being called, um, but it actually is going to contain information when we add this event listener. So if we go inside our function and just alert e, we forgot to also close out uh, the parentheses for our event listener. And we should also end it with a semicolon. So now, and we actually don't need that end bracket. So now if we run it and click on our ear, we can see we're getting an object called mouse event. Now anytime we have an object, there's a very simple way we can loop through and check out everything inside of it. We're going to create a for loop. And inside the for loop, we're going to say var i in, and then we're going to say e in this case, e is the name of our event object. We're just going to say first, uh, we're going to write the line twice. The first time we're going to write the, the property name. So if it's like uh, the position of the mouse in X, that's the, the name of it. And then the value after that is going to be the X value of that mouse position. So the name of the, each property it goes through is going to be I because we're going through each uh, I inside of our E object. After I've written down what the name of the property is, I need to grab the actual value so I can write it down. To do this, I'm going to create a quick variable called value. And I'll set this equal to our E object, our mouse event, and the current property we're on. And that's just going to return the exact value. So we're going to first write down what the property name is we're on, then get the value and write it down. This is going to make a lot more sense when I run this. So I'm going to hit F5 and run it. And now when we click on the ear, you can see a ton of text just passed over here on our JavaScript console. If you can't see the JavaScript console, just go to Window and click on JavaScript console. This is going to show us everything that we just wrote down. So the first thing it showed us that inside of our mouse event is the alt key. That's the property name. So is the alt key pressed down? False. No, we weren't holding the alt key when we clicked that. The next one is called button zero. Some of the information is not going to be very useful. But uh, like this one, client x and client y, this is telling us where the actual mouse is on the screen in comparison to the UI. And we can see everything from that to if the control key is held down, the screen Y and X, whether the shift key is held down, the image itself that it's looking at, the phase, the time it happened. And you can even get things such as the key of what they pressed. So this can be taken a long ways and uh, used to get a lot of information out of just a mouse click. A lot of people say that 
everything is impossible in extend script, but in reality there's a lot of ways around it. It's sort of like learning to speak a language. You start out by learning a couple words, and if you want to say something complicated, there's usually a way to say it around it. It's not necessarily very efficient, and it might take more lines of code, so to speak, but you can still get it done with the limitations that are given to you. So hopefully that explains event listeners well for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and my giant ear picture and script. If you have any questions on this difficult topic, make sure you leave them in the comments down below. And then make sure you leave the thumbs up on this video to let me know you enjoyed it, and I'll keep making content like it. And as always, we'll see you guys in the next one.